Lord, we have listened to your word read. And in its reading, may we hear. In our hearing, may we understand. In our understanding, may we believe. And in our believing, may we serve you. Speak, O Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. It was two weeks ago, Wednesday, when Google released its 2012 Zeitgeist. If you don't know what that is, for the past 10 years, Google has compiled each year all of the search terms, phrases that the entire world has searched for in its search engine. This past year, one of those searches struck my attention as Google compilated what we searched for in 2012. It was a specific word in the phrase, what is? Any guesses what the world was searching for? What is? Any guesses? What was it, Lisa? Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber? <laughs> good guess. That's a good guess. Other guesses? What is? What is love? Yes. What is love was the top searched for phrase in 2012 in 10 countries throughout the world. What is love? Senior VP and Google fellow Admit Sangal explains the following. He says, while there are perennial themes, what is love topped the list in 10 countries this year. It's the unusual and surprising that caught our attention in 2012. In response to that, I say, the mundane and perennial is what caught my attention in 2012. Google has been doing this zeitgeist thing for the past 10 years. And without fail, every year, the search for phrase, what is love, is there. The world is searching, quite literally, for love. Of course, John Lennon is no stranger to this reality as he wrote the song we just sang together, Happy Xmas, War is Over. He wrote about the struggles our world has with love. He chronicled the disparities we often see between groups of people in regard to their love for one another. Between rich and poor, black and white, yellow and red. Love is lacking in our world, Lenin writes. Fear, fighting, racial issues, economic injustices and the like have taken the place of love in our hearts. Lenin suggests we are more concerned about loving our near and dear ones rather than the poor, the weak, the infirm. As a society, he criticizes us for making too many far and forgotten ones who cry out for love. Essentially, he asks the question, where is the love? Where is the love? As people of faith, our response to that question is, of course, love is found in the birth of a Savior named Jesus. This, of course, is our answer to that question. Later on in Jesus' life, he said to his disciples the words that Steve read for us earlier this morning. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another just as I have loved you. Traditionally, these words are reflected and read upon during the season of Lent, specifically on Holy Thursday, the day before we remember Jesus offering his very life as a demonstration of God's love for us. In that season of the time in the church year, we're preparing for Jesus' departure, his crucifixion. Yet today, we hear these words anew as we prepare for Jesus' arrival. Jesus shows the world through his birth what love is. Jesus demonstrates to the world what love is at Christmas by exchanging heaven's throne for a feed trough. By emptying himself of all but love. By being so pleased with us in flesh to dwell. By emptying himself of all but love. 
by laying His glory by, by healing our sin-sick souls, by heavenly light and love. This is how our Savior demonstrates God's love at Christmas. The same Savior that encourages us to realize that we are known by that love too. He reminds us that we are known as His disciples by how we love one another. How are we choosing to love one another at Christmas? More than just our, our families who, who gather for meals, our, our friends who we send gifts to, but, but our extended families, the brothers and sisters of Christ. Our world, as Google reveals, is thirsting to know what love is. How are we going to show them? How are we going to show the world what love is? The manner in which we treat one another communicates an awful lot about us. The communication I received two weeks ago from a, a woman that I'd never met struck me profoundly. She had sent an email through our website. She had searched to find a worship service on Christmas Eve. At that point in the email, I thought, yes, this is what it should be about. Reaching people who maybe don't have a place to worship. But in the midst of my joy, she continued. She had searched on the website looking for a Christmas Eve worship service, but to her despair, our homepage listed Xmas Eve worship services rather than Christmas Eve worship services. And when she wrote the word Christmas in the email, it wasn't just Christmas, it was capitalized C-H-R-I-S-T, small capitals M-A-S. She was disappointed. She was hurt. She concluded the email with these words. When did the church decide to take Christ out of Christmas? Now let's set aside her misinformation about what the letter X means in the word Xmas for a moment. And let's be shared about the email that she sent. After all, she was looking for a place to worship. I presume that she was a Christian. A fellow believer longing to find a place, room in the inn, we might say, where she might come to worship her Savior. She came, clearly, looking for a place, a home, to worship. Her faith mattered to her, clearly. Otherwise, why would she send an email? And yet... Is this how we treat one another? Snap judgments, misinformed righteous indignation to strangers? If this is how we love one another in the church, around Christmas time no less, how are we loving those outside of it? Perhaps your heart responds to that question the same as my heart does, by saying, well, well wait a minute. That's this woman. I'm not like that. But think for a minute. Of all the things you did this morning, as you got ready to come to worship this morning, think about the conversations you had, the preparations you made. Think about all the snap judgments that you made in your mind. I know I made a few. This email was a reminder to me personally that we are still in need of a Savior. We are still in need of a reminder, a tangible, physical reminder of God's love demonstrated for us. And this is exactly what Christ calls us to be and do. To be that tangible reminder of a love that's demonstrated through the birth of an innocent child. After all, God could have come into our world in any myriad of forms. God could have sent a Hallmark card our way or a gift card to Amazon. God could have mailed us a package in the mail and wrapped it with a nice pretty bow. But no, God came as an innocent child. God's love was demonstrated by being born as an outcast in the place where there was no room for them. God's love was demonstrated at Christmas in the form of a helpless baby. God willingly emptied God's self of all power and pride 
and became an infant to demonstrate God's love for us. Google helps us to hear Jesus' call anew. How are we going to demonstrate the love of Christ at Christmas? The world is searching, quite literally, for love. Apparently, we've got some work to do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.